The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. The Bible over the past 10 years has gone through unnoted revisions. They've not been noted. So in fact, you can pick up a King James version of the Bible and it's not the same as the King James Bible version of the Bible that was printed back in the 80s and 90s or the early 2000s. You can pick up a copy now and if you're not careful concerning the author, don't ever get one from Lucius Trust. Don't do that. But you can pick up one and, and find altered words in there, altered stories. I mean, it changes everything. And it brings up this point of, it's almost like people believe that the Bible contradicts itself. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen, but not so funny because people are reading it more as a reference book, not as something real. This hybrid gospel is picking up so much steam because people have replaced the Holy Spirit with people's credentials. That's who they listen to based on credentials. And it's throwing people off concerning their knowledge when they should have trusted the Spirit in the verse plans. And this really does, it lights me up because it's spreading like a virus nobody can stop. If COVID-19 did anything, it only foreshadowed the spreading of this hybrid gospel all over the face of the earth with agents behind it missionaries behind it spreading more lies and it's all credential based it sounds logical it almost mimics the wisdom from above easy to be entreated why because it appeals to your sensibilities it doesn't convict you as much it puts the bible in the realm of myth and there's no conviction when the bible is in the realm of being a non-historical contextual book there's no conviction if the Bible, and Satan is out to tell everybody this, he wants everybody to know that the Bible is not, well, historically correct. Satan wants people to know that. Why? Because it stops conviction. That's why. And what is conviction? Conviction comes from what? A person's realization that they have sinned. So Satan wants to stop it. And so what does it come out with? Academia, schools that teach people about the Bible in a very weird way. God will always put the truth right in front of our faces, but it can only be seen spiritually. For example, in the Bible it says the word must be discerned spiritually. You know what that word discerned means? Discerned means understood. It must be understood spiritually. So what happens if you try to understand it logically? What happens if you try to understand it academically? You're going to fail. You're going to come up with the wrong conclusions. You're going to be far left or far right or far something, but you're going to be away from the kingdom of God, which is going to cause a bitterness. In all cases, all of these guys, every single person in this category carries a bitterness. It's like they're on the verge of an argument on a continuous basis. If you meet them in person, they fake niceness. They have to fake that they're overly nice. Have you ever met a person who's overly nice? Just as fake as a $3 bill, but they're overly nice. And I hate to be so harsh like this, but they fake a niceness. Internally, if God would open your ears to hear what they were saying by way of the heart, you would be repulsed instantly because they fake this niceness in order to get you to believe their way. That's important to them. That's important. They only want you to believe their way. Their way is full. Listen, it's full of arrogance and it is full of violence. Listen, a person who loves the Lord is going to be like the Lord, period. A person who loves our father is going to be like their father. Jesus said, you will do the will of your father in the earth. So whoever your father is, that's the will you're doing in the earth, right? God is merciful. He didn't strike me down. He didn't strike you down. He didn't strike anybody down for what they have done, but yet he offered repentance, not once, not twice, not three times and four times, but a multitude of times, and it continues unto this day. God never forced you to believe in the Bible a specific way. He never did that. People do that. God doesn't do that. God will simply present the truth, and he gives us grace. You know what grace is? Grace is time to hear that truth. That's what grace is. Grace is when we live 80 years, but we did not live it serving the Lord in truth. That's grace. Mercy is that we're still alive because we should have been killed at birth, but we weren't because God is full of mercy and full of grace. So with all this mercy and grace, we've been given room to make choices and we made the wrong ones first. So you have these people. I'm telling you what, if you could see what's inside of them, 
these are scorpions. These are not even serpents. They're scorpions. And many of you in COT have, you've heard me refer to people as either serpents or scorpions. These are scorpions, not serpents. But they are full of venom. For example, in 1750, so David prevailed over the Philistines with a sling and with a stone. Why won't they ever use the word sling? Because it places this in full context, spiritual context, for those, right, who have born-again spirits. Uh, let me give you a word on something. Listen, if the Bible is confusing to you, honestly, you need a born-again spirit to discern the truth of that word. You may have a portion of that truth, but God will not open it up until you have that born-again spirit. Because it takes a born-again spirit to walk in the totality of that word. You cannot walk in the word by yourself. You can't do it. You're going to have to have a born-again spirit. There are certain desires you're going to have. With God, the most insignificant thing of his creation can kill the tallest giant. That's with God. Because if you overcome something, it is by God's grace. And listen, by God's grace... There is no giant that will ever take you. Do you understand? That's why I can walk around this earth with no fear. I have no fear but anything that will ever happen to me. I'm very responsible with other folks, but I have no fear of what will happen with me. Because when you know things like this, and you have put them to the test, see, I'm not just running my mouth here. I've been in areas where I've taken that insignificant thing, not necessarily a rock, but even less significant, and have destroyed the plans of the enemy when lives depended on it. I've walked through that. I've been in the valley of the shadow of death. And at first, I feared every single evil I ever saw. But with faith, you can walk through that valley with a smile on your face. Very sober, not scoffing darkness at all, not scoffing Satan. I will not scoff Satan. I have nothing to say to him. But I'll walk with the Lord everywhere I go. The Lord's grace can defeat anything that would stand in the way of your walk with the Lord. And that's just his grace, not even his power. My goodness. If God's grace can defeat the devil in full, what do you think God's power can do? The story of King David, by the way, they find things. Because you better believe that fight was kept. And all of what was in this fight was found and is kept. See, the problem with allowing the populace to know that they have found certain things is that you have evil men in these societies who will go and burn up everything they can and then scoff your evidence of having anything. But also, it shouldn't take evidence for us to believe, should it? We have a built-in evidence that came as we were born. It's called confirmation of the Holy Ghost. Nobody can fake that one. And everybody who is filled with the Holy Spirit, you can know the truth about every single situation you've ever been in. It only takes you walking spiritual, accepting the newness Christ would bestow upon you that you may have a born-again spirit. You have that born-again spirit when God knows you're willing to take the additional steps. That's when you have a born-again spirit. And you know that born-again spirit is in you when your desires change. But you don't struggle with this sin and that sin anymore. Those sins become nothing. You don't struggle with sin for the rest of your life. You don't do that. Mystery solved. Because God gives us a born-again spirit. Man can never dictate when God gives that born-again spirit. Jesus said, the wind blows where it listeth. No one knows where it comes or goes. So is one born of the Spirit. He said something along those terms. So God dictate, he, he will dictate when a person has a born-again spirit based upon their sincerity, their willingness to carry on. He knows when you're going to carry on in the Word. By faith, He knows when you're ready. You can line five kids up with their parents, and you can give that kid, that child, something, maybe an advanced toy. You're going to have a parent that will say, he or she is not ready yet. Thank you, but they're not ready. Because they already know the habits of the child. They already know what that child is going to do with that toy. They already know what the parent knows. God knows exactly what we're going to do in every given situation. Nevertheless, by his mercy and grace, he will present us with a choice in everything we do. And it's up to us to choose. Here's what I'll define as a scorpion and a serpent. A scorpion is one who is given over to a reprobate mind, right? They're given over. They have no faith in Christ. Actually, they believe in Christ. They know all about Christ. And they absolutely do not like anything. that They, they don't like his way in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what a scorpion is. And a scorpion is subservient to a serpent. A serpent is someone who was born that way. Serpents are born that way. Serpents seek to hide, most of all. In other words, they, they're like commanders. Right, they're given a zone. 
Nobody can put them out of that zone, no matter what they do. Until Jesus comes back, these things have their zones, and they work that way. They'll give orders to the scorpions, and the scorpions go out and conduct the labors person to person. They always get an individual who has turned against Christ. They always give these folks who love their sin and their worldly ways more than the gospel. They don't believe in the gospel. They don't appreciate the gospel. They don't want the gospel. These people are given over to a reprobate mind. There is no redemption for them because they don't want redemption. And a scorpion settles in. These take orders from the serpents. The serpents have permanent positions all over the place. And you're not going to uproot a serpent because a serpent is a sign. They're principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. They are a sign in certain areas. Nobody's going to boot them out of that area because God is allowing them to be there. God has already told us that the kingdoms of this world right now belong to the God of this world. The God of this world is Lucifer. That's what our Father says. The God of this world is. It is Lucifer. In the book of Revelation, very soon the kingdoms of this world are going to become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. But at the moment, no, they're not His. Do you really think that if these kingdoms belong to the living God, that anybody could withstand the gospel of Jesus Christ being posted all over the place? No. The gospel would not be rejected. It would be embraced. So long as the gospel is rejected, you know that the kingdoms of this world do not belong. Right? They're not our fathers yet. He's allowing Satan and his little minions to do what they do for a time, only for a season. And then all that will be undone. If it weren't for Satan, you would not know sin. If it weren't for Satan, you would never have an equal choice between darkness and light. If it weren't for Satan, because why didn't God destroy Satan already? Because he has a purpose and a role for your glory and your victory. Why is that? Because once you're exposed to Satan, you realize you don't belong with that guy. That's why. Once you find yourselves on the wrong side of the battlefield, the first thing you say to yourself is, I don't belong here. This is not me. That's the first thing you say. And then you start looking for light. Now you have to be cautioned to remember those times that you were steeped in sin. And the first day you realized sin was not for you. That's what you, you can never forget that. That's when you actually start waking up. That's when the Lord wakes you up. He exposes you to darkness. He gives you a good and healthy taste of it. And then you ultimately say, I don't want anything to do with the darkness. That's what happens. That's why I don't look at people in sin and scoff them either. Because everybody has to have their taste of what darkness is. Everybody. Or else, how can they choose the light? Somebody says, how do serpents take over the souls? Now, this is just me. This is based on what I see. This is how I'm communicating this, okay? This is my explanation to you. There are people in this earth that are blessed from the womb. That means they actually have, their parents actually have a soul, not a condemned one. They could have been, you know, a little bit on a shaky side when they were young, but not a condemned one, but they have a soul. And so a child is born. That's God's order. It's following God's order. There are others who have been operating far outside of God's order for a long time. There are abominations on this earth most of you don't need to know about. I know you have an interest in such things, but in truth, I mean, it just it's too real. There are certain things that are too real, and it will upset everything. In fact, if you were to see some things, out of sheer fear, you would never sin again, because you wouldn't want to fall into the hands of these things. You would have a need to be protected. You can be frightened terribly. Why do you think these things are hid from your sight? Are they here on this earth? Yes. But they have no authorization right now to do certain things to you. And don't be fooled by um, when a person is having these experiences with these other tricksters. It's because they're curious about them. Normally they come at a time when a person has almost no belief. I don't know if you guys have figured this out yet. We're going to talk about this. You ready? It's important that everyone have a belief. And have you noticed that people who are assaulted by otherworldly things are the ones who walk around with no belief? You hear me? It's important that everyone have a belief. Think of it this way. A serpent dressed up the serpents and human beings who have spirits from the Father. If you just have those two, but all of a sudden somebody came around that had nothing in them, that's real estate. All of darkness is going to see that real estate. All of darkness. And all of darkness will make their bid for that real estate. It's important that everybody have some belief. And so you see often, if you go back and look at some of these people who are having these experiences, these are folks who have hardly no belief system at all. They're just living life. They have not considered the depth of the spiritual realm. And so they're running around empty for anything to inhabit them. 
Well, when darkness sees this, they say, well, boys, real estate, let's go get them. And they will immediately try to take it over, to spread themselves like a virus. That's what they do. Once a person has a belief, they're left alone. Once they have a belief, they're left alone. They're not really challenged in that way anymore. But if they have no belief, they are real estate. And darkness will see it and go nuts over it. And that person, well, they're normally blindsided by very captivating and frightening things. That's what usually happens. And they will go to any length they can to get to a person. God's children have freedom of choice. Here's the difference between God's children and anybody else. And sometimes this is so very difficult to communicate. There are people whose names were never in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Listen, there are people among you right now whose names were never, ever in the book of life. And let me tell you something. These people are not like you. How many of you would cry for Lucifer because he's on death row? How many? How many will feel bad for Lucifer? How many of you feel awful for Lucifer? I do not. I don't feel bad for him because he wasn't tricked into doing what he was doing. He did what he did willingly. There are people on this earth, they know exactly what they're doing, but they fool you into believing they're more victims than anything else. Many of the righteous will cry for these people because they cannot see. But when God opens your eyes, all your tears are going to stop. Anybody who does not make it, you will not shed a tear for them because you will understand exactly what they are. Because God is a just God and he gives us freedom of choice. He must also introduce punishments for those who recant their faith or begin to work outside of it, right? So there are threats to have your names blotted out of the book of life. Never once will you read it ever happened. That infuriates Satan. You will never read any confirmation that anybody was blotted out of the book of life. You'll never read that. Because there are two origins of people on this earth. Why do you guys think Satan, when he was experimenting back in the day and, def- and, and, and deceived those angels to fall in the first place and to share themselves in a brand new form with women to have children? Why do you think he did that? Many say because he was disrupting the plan of Christ. Fine, but why in the book of Daniel would it say he shall mingle his seed with the seed of men but will not cleave one to another which means this is a fourth kingdom he's doing it again so why would he be doing it this time why corrupt the DNA when we are going to shed this flesh we're going to get out of this flesh so why fool with the DNA and the fruit? What, what, who cares about the DNA a saint does not but the devil must a saint could care less about DNA but the devil must and believe me That's one of his primary interests of this day. If a person's DNA is corrupted, can their souls be saved? What do you think a born-again spirit's for? Thank you, Lord. What do you think that's for? A born-again spirit will supersede DNA always. You're not taking your flesh to the kingdom. Flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood is for this earth. But listen, there is no redemption plan for Satan. What about the rest of the fallen angels? who fell to earth, not the ones who were bound, but the rest of them who fell. One third of the angels fell. We know that some fell on Mount Hermon, making a pact amongst each other to mate with women and to bear great men and giants in the earth. They defiled man and beast, which is, I believe, why we have dinosaurs, but they're at it again. Why? They've been doing this all throughout history. Why? What are they doing? Because there's no inheritance for them. They need the earth to last for a long, 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 long time. Do you know that? They need human beings to last for a long, 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 long time. You know that, don't you? If you read the book of Enoch, the fallen angels who fell and who were, who God had the four angels to bind up, they didn't cry for themselves. Who did they cry for? Maybe you never heard this before, but do you know who they cried for? They didn't cry for themselves. They asked Enoch, they said, Enoch, go to God and and ask him, send this petition. But God had already told Enoch, I'm not going to accept any petition from Azazel and Simyaza and all those who fell, who agreed with this. I'm not going to accept anything. They will have no salvation. They will be locked away. They didn't cry about that. They will even be damned. They didn't cry about that. And they're locked away in a place that is made just for them. That is worse than hell itself. They didn't cry about that. Guess what they cried about? They cried because they wanted their children to inherit eternal life. Did you guys know that? They cried because they wanted their children to 
inherit eternal life. They cried for their sons and their daughters. But guess what their sons and their daughters were? Giants, things that consume the acquisitions of men, and even men themselves. Creatures in the sea, creatures in the sky, creatures on land, giants in the earth. In that world, God set them at war with one another. Did you know that? You had men of renown in those days who had great kingdoms. God made those kingdoms go to war with one another. And then the flood came to wipe out the rest. But the Bible says there were Nephilim before the flood and also after that. So where did the rest of them go? You guys hear about them all the time. You just can't identify them. They're among you. They are flesh and blood just like you and I. But they have a spiritual language. They still have the supernatural giftings. But they have no inheritance. No inheritance for an eternal life. They're bound to the earth. And it's very important to them that the earth remain. What do you think in truth? I'm going to tell you something. I know in the Bible it's written that God will destroy those who destroy the earth. And even that has to be clarified. But why do you think all these worldly people are primarily concerned about their health and the earth? Why? Because they're driven by something. If the earth were to blow up, that means all the Nephilim are going to be judged. They're going to be done away with. Do you know that? They can go no further. Do you realize that? They can go no further. If the earth goes... So do they. They cannot ascend into the heavens. They have no placement where the others have placement either. No, they have to go away. They have to be undone. Do you know that? That's probably why Satan does not want people reading the book of Enoch. Because the book of Enoch tells you exactly what you've been fighting with on this earth. Like your emotions. When Siegfried and all those guys came along to define all these voices in your head, they called most of them emotions. That's not how God categorized emotions. God has already categorized emotions. And emotions are important for the flesh, not for your spirit. Even doctors know that emotions are spawned from chemical changes in the brain due to stimuli from your environment, from your thoughts. So it's a chemical exchange that happens in the body. Absent your body, there's only the spiritual realm. Which means that that's why in certain dreams you can be hit with a sense of fear you have never felt in your life. You can also be hit with a sense of joy you will never experience on earth. And if you have remorse for anybody in your dreams, it's because you truly understand. You have insights of things you can never have in real life. No, Satan's doing his best to hide the reality from most. And so people struggle on this earth, wrapped in their own minds. Because for the most part, people are stubborn and they trust in their own ways. Remember in the Bible, it says, lean not unto your own understanding. That's so difficult sometimes to convey to people. We do that all the time. We lean onto our own understanding. What would happen if you didn't? Anyway, did you guys see this about how important it is to really have your feet planted, specifically in the gospel of Jesus Christ? You know, everything has become a facade in this world. My point is this, if we're going to advocate something, let's advocate for the kingdom of God, not for the games of men that do nothing but cause carnage in the realm of flesh. Because in, in, in this is my humble opinion, there's no side over there that's correct. If you knew what I knew, you wouldn't advocate for the Ukraine or Russia either. You'd be sick to your stomach. Don't fall for the propaganda. By way of media, they will show people exactly what they need to show them to bolster support for the moment. If they don't need support, you're not going to hear about it. All eyes are upon this war. And if you don't think they're profiteers from this battle, you're sadly mistaken. Billions are being made. Why do you think people um, around the world try to buy your debt? There's money in that, right? Try not to lose yourself because all what will happen if you start buying this propaganda, you're going to believe like the world believes. And if you're believing like the world believes, you're not seeing the spiritual truth. And the spiritual truth, ladies and gentlemen, is the truth. Now, I don't know about you, but we need the truth. That's what we need, the spiritual truth. Not to believe propaganda, because it will cause us to take a side. Satan ultimately wants you to take a side amongst his kingdoms. Right? That's what he wants. God will thoroughly purge the entire earth with all kingdoms. No kingdom will be excluded. And when he's finished, he will restore this earth and all people to one language. Not two, not three, not four, one. A pure language, one pure worship with one pure kingdom. And it will no longer nor ever be fractured again. Never forget the times of Abel when everything was split apart. So long as we have different languages, God did not finish the reconciliation of humanity, of his children. Remember that. 
So long as we don't have one common language, Satan is among us and darkness is working. Remember that. All of that will be going away soon. If you do remember that, you'll become an advocate to the kingdom of God, a spokesman for God's truth, not taking sides for the world. You've got to be careful of that. The world will hate you if you don't take a side. Trust me, I know that personally. If you don't take a side, they'll hate you. You'll put yourself at risk and everything else. But I'll tell you something is coming down to this. You either place yourself at risk of losing your friendship with the world and stand with the Lord because you'll not have both. The Lord will come back. By the time the Lord comes back, you will have seen many works of Satan. In fact, haven't you noticed with a Christian, there is a stage they go through right before they leave this world. They find out what the world actually is. Before Christian dies, they try to tell many people, be careful, don't they? They try to advise people, don't waste your time in propaganda, don't they? They seem to say the same thing over and over again. Why? Because the older you get, you may not know this, but the more your senses of the world dull, like your hearing. An adult cannot hear past a specific frequency. So your senses are dulled. When you're a kid, colors are vibrant, sounds are mysterious, all sorts of things. When you get old, it all looks the same. And because the world becomes dull, you tend to look inwardly into a lot of reflection. The spiritual realm wakes up because the noise goes away. You start growing spiritually. And when that happens, you begin to see much more truth. And when that takes place, you start telling everybody to hang on, hang in there, finish the process. You understand their discomforts. Things sometimes won't go right, but God is faithful. He knows what he's doing. That's what they begin to do. If we would only hear them. That's why I like talking to them. I hate to say this sometimes, but folks right now who are in their 80s, I love talking to them. They have incredible wisdom. I find them to be quite precious and rare. And they have insights that only a person of that age can get. Because in this world, people are going blind every day. Blind by, they, they can't see what's happening before them. It's becoming harder and harder for them to discern anything spiritual. They're given over to fables again, just like the word says. Given over to fables, fairy tales, and all these other things more than the word of faith. They're doing away with faith which is why they bolster so much science. Just as sure as they say hope is not a tactic because they, they don't have their footing in faith like that and things are being lost. Now, but when we get older, we tend to see these things. But in these days, you have to hold on because Satan is going to hit you with everything he has. He understands he's on death row. He understands we're in the process of birth. But by the way, when the contractions really begin to hit, that's when everybody shows up, right? When there are physical signs, not just a pregnant woman saying, ouch, or ooh, I think I'm close, but when there are physical signs, when the dilation begins, that's when it becomes serious. And of course, when the water breaks, that's when everything is committed. That's when the, the, the timer starts going backwards. Well, guess what? Of the earth, the water is about to break. The water has not broken yet. Not my humble opinion, the water has by no means broken yet. It's about to break. I don't believe that any of you, by the time we hit February of 2023, I don't believe any of you are going to have a mindset like you have right now. You will have undergone some things. The earth will have undergone some things. And as you can see right now, things are changing fast. All these things we spoke about, you're now living in those days that are about to escalate. There are some things that are coming we have not discussed yet that the earth will surely undergo. My hope is that you guys are truly prepared for them and not blindsided. But I also know that if you're given over to prop this propaganda of this world, you're going to be so vested in what one side is doing over the other. You're going to miss the spiritual implications of things. A day will come when not one soul can afford to let the sun touch them. That day is coming. A night will come when the air will be so black and thick no one will open their doors or windows. A time will come when people will have, they will sit their homes in the dark just to eat because they won't want anyone else to see them eating. And you watch that day come and come soon. Those of you who have Christ, make sure that you really have him, that he is really your Lord and Savior. Not just Savior, but your Lord also. Please make sure. There's no comfort in doing something haphazardly. And then when you need deliverance, from the individual of which you worked haphazardly, when you need that deliverance, 
you have no self-confidence because you know you did not put forth all your effort. I'll tell you something. If you do everything you can do right now for the Lord, listen to me, in your heart, don't make it, don't do it because I said it. Don't do it because it's written. Do it because it's in your heart. In other words, think about it. Cultivate a heart for doing things of the Lord and listen to me. If you never want to entertain fear again, if you never want to entertain doubt again, then exhaust all of what you know how to do righteously and simply do it. Don't sit on your hands and wait. Don't do it. Don't have a discussion with yourself for another year, making no moves at all. Stop wondering who you are and understand that God has made you someone and he knows exactly who you are. If God knows exactly who I am, it is not important that I know who I am. It's important that he is still my father. If the Lord knows all details of everything that's going on, I need not know everything that's going on. What I'm saying is be authentic with the Lord as much as possible, as much as you're able. You're going to find that in a time of trial. You're going to have that confidence in him. This is a true, very true statement. When you know you have exhausted everything that you can do for a person, should they turn and blame you for something, it won't even penetrate anymore. When a person blames you for something you didn't do, you know why it hurts? When somebody blames you for something, sometimes it stings and it hurts because you did not exhaust everything that you could do not to be blamed. You didn't exhaust everything in the realm of righteousness to do either. Because if you were to exhaust everything you know how to do in righteousness and somebody would turn around and blame you, it would hit you right in the heart, bounce off and go somewhere else. Why? Because when you exhaust everything you humanly know how to do and spiritually know how to do, you stand in confidence and you will say, Lord, I have done everything I can do. And you'll say that with honesty, without question. When you can do that, nothing penetrates you. And that's the armor of God, by the way. That's the armor of God. But the armor of God is not put on a person who will not exhaust everything they know how to do. A lazy person will never wear God's armor. God's armor is not like man's armor. With man's armor, you can put it on anybody. With God's armor, you have to put it on, which means you have to exercise the will of God to have it. Hope you understand that. You can't just go and grab that breastplate, the shield of faith. You can't go grab that. When you step into faith and exhaust all of your faith, now you have the shield because you have utilized your faith to the greatest possible degree that you know how. You have a shield and nothing will penetrate that shield. Your helmet of salvation. When you have given your life to Christ and you receive all of what he has done, nothing can change your mind and cause you to follow darkness. Nothing will sit there and take up your time while you sit there and meditate. Well, who am I? Why am I really here? You won't do that anymore. Why? Because you will have accepted all things of Christ. Only in that way will you have the helmet of salvation. If you're pondering too many things and doubting, chances are you're not wearing the helmet of salvation. To wear the helmet of salvation is to fully receive it. What happened at the cross? To understand that story, to fully receive it, that's wearing the helmet of salvation. And if you have that on, nothing can penetrate your mind anymore. How many of you would like your mind to never be penetrated anymore? and accept all things of Christ to the best of your ability, not my ability, not somebody else's ability, but to the best of your ability because God has given all people truth. We just don't always choose the truth. When you accept all of what the Lord did for you at the cross, that's when you have that helmet of salvation on. That's when your mind is shielded from Satan and his minions. That's when you're no longer fascinated. Listen, it's going to kill your fascination. With this world of the mystique, it'll kill that fascination. I would love for people to experience the reality of a relationship with Christ. And that reality of that relationship is uh, is everything you're looking for. Because see, the Lord has had me in just about every position a person can be in. I know what it is to just be pressured on every side. It's kind of like what the apostles wrote. You know, they're pressured on every side. and Things may not look right this way and that way and this way, but but they're, they're just... Uh, you know, they wouldn't trade it for anything. And nothing causes their faith to waver. My hope is that people get into that place before the unfolding of some of these major things that are coming. Remember something Jesus said, there's no other time like the time you're entering into. No other time. And there won't be a time like it after. This transition period that you're about to enter into, that time, you know, we've already stepped over the threshold, which means we've come partway into the door. 
is going to reveal the nature of the heavens, which is not like you thought it was, right? Sometimes it does no good to talk about certain subjects because you're going to see it. And once you see it, everything in your mind is going to fight it. When your mind fights a topic or subject, you simply can't remember. So that will happen. But the nature of the heavens change is going to be so significant that it's going to change everything. If there was any time the beast would come on the scene, it would be in during that time of transition of the heavens. Why? Because it's going to be so far outside of what you're used to. Forget a sky, blue sky. There'll be no more blue sky. We're going to have a different color sky. In fact, most colors will begin to change. Don't worry if you belong to the living God because you'll be woken up to balance that out spiritually. You're spiritually alive. It's by way of your spirit, this flesh is going to be quickened so long as you're here on this earth. But I hope you guys understand about this hybrid word. Now, this hybrid word is coming with representatives spreading fast. It's giving way to more hybrid words, hybrid churches. There are some things happening right now that will challenge the best of us. I can tell you right now, if you learn to exhaust, which is to utilize all of your faith, use it in everything always. Walk with the Lord now. Walk with Him now before it's too late. There will come a time when no one will be able to work anymore. Jesus told us about that time. Those are days of stark transition when humanity is going to face what it never faced before. I strongly believe that all things are pointing to this time as being a time of release. So this last thing I'm going to tell you is this. With your greatest sincerity, would you please stand up in your faith? And as we stand up in our faith here at COT, will you not give up on those things the Lord has put within you, but to simply stand up in your faith and see a salvation? I've already asked the Lord for a direction in a lot of these studies we'll be doing in that. And we're not talking about any money or any of those things. No, we're talking about your situation changing so that you are the witness to God's goodness in your situation. So your testimony will ultimately be that God does deliver. Because once you know that, you won't be touched. You guys have been preserved. How many of you know you have been preserved? I know a lot of pastors that I cannot help but to see them as being preserved for specific times. Many of you are preserved for a specific time and season. In that season, everything counts. And your whole life will likely boil down to that one season. God has given much preparation to all of us. My prayer is that you guys go all the way, but that most of all, that you become joyful about God's deliverance, about Him keeping His word for you in your life. You're soon to see it. As this world goes upside down, so will the power increase that will be exercised among you. This is that time. So instead of fear, have faith. Stay in His word and exercise and do all those things you know to be right by the words of Christ.